Hey folks, it's Piano Man Steve. Thanks for tuning in to my blog post today. I am laid up right now. <clears throat> Basically uh, down to one usable leg. I have a kind of a nasty case of the gout. And I'm only telling you that because as I've been wallowing in my self-pity for the last couple of days, not really being able to walk, uh, it's caused me to think of the topic of what this blog post is going to be. This blog post is called Dealing with the Incoming Fire. And so let me give you a little history here of what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> gout's usually caused by one of, it's, well, it's almost always caused by the same thing. It's dietary patterns. But it can come out in two different ways. It can come out while you're eating the food that's loaded with the purines which in my case I never really got it much while I was eating that kind of food because I have a real talent for uh, creating fat cells um, which is how I managed to get to be 335 pounds which is uh, where I was when I started my descent here um, or it can happen when you start losing the weight because what ends up happening is all this uric acid builds up in your body and if you are building enough extra fat constantly inside your body, then the uric acid kind of gets stored inside the fat cells. If you're not building fat cells or growing fat cells fast enough for the uric acid to go in there, then it settles somewhere, uh, first in the joints and then eventually it can settle in organs and you end up with things like kidney stones. Thank goodness it's not come to that, but in my case, um, it was always just sort of storing in the fat and I was probably approaching a point at some point soon where I wasn't going to be able to gain more weight. I was probably headed for something pretty ugly like type 2 diabetes or something and at that point then the uric acid wouldn't have more fat cells to go into and would have started settling in my joints and I would have ended up having it then. But in my case what ended up happening was when I changed my dietary patterns I started losing a lot of weight and burning a lot of that fat off and as the fat would burn then the uric acid would have to go somewhere and sometimes I just my body could not dispose of it fast enough through the usual you know cycles of, of letting go of waste that it had to settle somewhere and here it is in my foot. This happened to me all over the last two years since I've been working to lose weight and become healthier. This has happened to me three or four times and almost always after I reached a new uh, weight set point where um, even though I was eating all the same stuff that had been causing me to lose weight, I'd stop losing weight for a while because my body had settled in. Uh, it settled in real heavily for a while at about 270 and then again at 250 and then right now I just busted through about 235 and we're going to keep going, but when I hit these set points, when I go through them, sometimes I end up having a lot of fat burning going on and then all this uric acid just can't exit fast enough because it doesn't have anywhere to go and it lands either in my toe joints or in this particular case, it's in my ankle joint and it really hurts. It's sort of like having a broken foot for about a week. And you know, if you catch it early enough and drink a lot of cherry juice or take the gout medication, Sometimes you can stave off the worst and it just hurts a little bit for a couple days and goes away. But sometimes you think you've caught it early and it still flares up and you end up pretty much disabled for a while. So that's the situation that I'm in, which is why I haven't filmed any blog posts. Uh, and this is my first one in three days. Um, um, I was suffering from this during the last one, but I was able to put some weight on and it just hurt like hell when I did. So anyway, but I haven't been able to do anything but uh, lay out on the couch with an ice pack on my foot and have my poor wife bring me and be it, bring me everything and be at my beck and call. And anytime I had to go somewhere, I'd have to hop to the bathroom or whatever. And so it was uh, on one leg or crawl or whatever. So it's been pretty, it's been a pretty severe situation. And it, the reason why I think that this is important, and I promise I will draw this back to playing the piano, because <laughs> I'm sure right now you're going, 
You've really shared a lot of stuff with us and none of it has anything to do with what you normally teach and you're definitely freaking me out. I didn't want to know all this about you. But here's why I'm, I'm thinking of it. This, I didn't see coming. And, it's, and it really sucks because this is the result of doing something good. It's actually the result of doing something bad for a long time. You know, but once I made my changes and I, you know, it's, I'm doing the right thing for my body, but this is called a healing crisis. And so I'm actually having to go through some pain in order for things to get better. And it's really thrown my routine off. And that's why I'm calling this dealing with the incoming fire, because we all make plans to do things and we have things that we plan on and that we think we're going to be able to get to. And out of the blue, crap like this happens and it just stops us in our tracks. It absolutely brings everything to a halt. And guess what? It didn't matter what I wanted to film, what I wanted to accomplish, if I wanted to put new tracks together for something, if I had a booking. I mean, I would probably try and figure out a way to go honor a, a booking at a gig and have to sit instead of stand like I normally do, but it would be excruciating and it probably would have flared this up worse. I'm very, very lucky that this happened to me uh, this week where I don't have anything, I don't have to play again uh, until a week from tomorrow, so I should probably be cleared up by the time I get to that. But this has happened to me when I had to play gigs before and I have always honored it except for one time it was so bad and I got it in both feet. Um, early on uh, through my first weight set point and I had to cancel a gig and it was terrible but you know these things come up and they take over your life and there's nothing you can do about it and it really is annoying because there's this thing you're trying to do that requires consistent action and requires a commitment and you probably were building momentum on it at the time and then this thing comes up and it just stops you in your tracks and you can't continue to work on it. And then you're disheartened. And when you finally get through it, it's really hard to go back. I know how that is. It's hard to go back to the routine because the momentum you were feeling prior to whatever came in and stopped you just doesn't feel like it's there anymore. So... That is true with me. I was lucky. I felt this coming on on Monday. Uh, it's now Thursday. And on Monday, I, I kind of felt this coming on. So I got up. I filmed a blog post. And I filmed both lesson clips that I needed to get done for this week to meet my minimum standards for the members portal. Just in case. I wasn't sure how bad this was going to get. By Tuesday, I could not have filmed if I wanted to. So I was, I kind of lucked out and I got that taken care of. And so now I'm just kind of uploading those videos and um, that'll all come out as normal. I have not yet filmed my, my song tutorial clip for the week and I don't know whether I'll be able to. I can do this right now because I can have my feet up, but I cannot sit at the piano for a long period of time for 15 or 20 minutes and teach something with my with some weight on that foot and with my right foot below me like that because it just throbs it's pulsating pain all the time so i can't do it right now and i might not be cleared up i if i am cleared up by saturday then i can film that and still have it out in time to be in my newsletter but i'm willing to accept that maybe i can't get to that this week and if that's the case, then I'm going to have to do two song tutorial clips ne next week because I have commitments that I want to keep for you guys. But I guess the point of this video as it relates to your practice is it's important to make plans. It's important to make commitments and to stick to them however you can. But you also need to be realistic enough to understand that life is going to happen. And it's going to interrupt the flow of your practice. Because I know some of you are all fired up right now. Uh, and you go through these cycles and these stages where it's like, boy, you know, right now I feel very fired up about the piano. And I'm going to practice for hours a day, every day. And boy, I'm just going to make it part of my routine and I am going to get better. And it, 
it's cool and you you gain some things out of that and it's important to enjoy those moments when your foot's really down on the accelerator but what you will inevitably find every time you go through this is that you're going to start building some momentum and then life is going to happen and you are not going to be able to put in the two hours of practice you promised yourself you were going to do every day you're just not going to be able to something more pressing is going to come up or something that can't be avoided or delayed is going to come up and if you are flaming artists like myself then what I know to be a fact is that when those things come up it almost sends you into a stage of depression because it's like are you kidding me this thing I care about so much I want to be doing but I can't because guess what this other thing that I don't care about but has to be done is drawing my attention away and you had such high hopes that you were going to be able to keep practicing two hours a day or whatever it is and because you can't do it at that level you don't do anything does this sound familiar the only reason I'm talking about it is because it's been true in my life forever and the things that have really turned it around is an acceptance of the fact that real life isn't going away so it's not that I dumb down my commitments it's that I started using a technique called minimum target outrageous it was created by a kind of a self-help teacher called Raymond Aaron Raymond Aaron and he talks about how what we need to do is figure out what would we really like to get done out of this what would be something we could get done out of all of this just you know if all else fails just something some progress and then what would be like this crazy outlandish version where we went farther than our wildest dreams and you write those down and when you're setting up your your commitments you create minimum commitments that you're gonna get done so if you're thinking your target is I want to practice two hours a day but your outrageous would be that you practice three hours a day great but what's your minimum could your minimum be that you find 20 minutes if everything else fails it's 10 percent of what you were planning to do or you know 20 minutes versus two hours not actually 10 percent because it's hours are not in tens but see what I'm saying could you find 20 minutes on a day when it, when all hell breaks loose and everything else goes to the pits and you just can't do what you promised yourself you would do at the same level but could you find 15 or 20 minutes to practice something and just keep yourself engaged that changed my life because let me tell you how I used to operate my business before I started this membership portal many of you already know this but a lot of you are new clients new customers that have joined me in the last six months since I've been in this new uh, streaming platform that we have I used to sell everything all my videos are sold as individual videos as digital downloads and then I had them available in packages and when I would make a video rather than it being one technique so for instance when you log into the membership portal under the rhythm pattern section you're gonna see you know rock pop rhythm pattern number one rock pop rhythm pattern number two rock and each one of those are a video right but when I was selling videos individually they would be a collection of those things so if I did that it'd be become your own rhythm section volume one and that would have like three or four rhythm patterns in it and the video would be an hour and a half to two hours long money licks volume one three or four licks you know understanding chords that would go through major chords minor chords blah 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 several different kinds and here was the problem it was overwhelming for me to teach in that big of a chunk I could do it but it was mentally and emotionally exhausting and physically you know I mean you sit there my back would start to hurt trying to stay engaged mentally and really give you what you deserve for that length of time was very difficult for me so I would get done with one of these videos and then the post-production would take forever because it takes a long time to publish something that long and then it takes a long time to upload things to the 
to the digital carrier where I would be able to send out the download links and all of that. So it would take a long time to actually get any of that, to get that ready for market. And when I would finally get it done, I would have felt like I'd worked so hard that, and I just would basically check out for a while. I just couldn't film anything. And so I would be off my routine. I would not be in the habit of filming new lessons. And it was driving me crazy because I had plenty to teach. But trying to figure out how to theme several things together into a video like that, it was so difficult. Whereas now I can just, you know, oh, here's a rhythm pattern, so I teach the rhythm pattern. And the next thing I might think of is a lick. Oh, I'll just teach the lick. But before, I, I wouldn't want to teach a rhythm pattern until I had like five or, you know, four or five rhythm patterns that I could teach in one video. And I wouldn't want to teach a lick until I had four or five licks I could teach in one video. And as a result, I just wasn't doing new videos as often as I needed to. And then guilt would pile up on me because I knew people wanted new material and the health of my business absolutely relied on being able to put new material out. So what would I do? I would go on a rampage and I would film like a whole package of things. A package of five videos that were an hour and a half or two hours long. All themed around a thing, you know, like become your own rhythm section, the collection. <laughs> uh, the Licks and Fills collection or the, the ballad pack or whatever. And they were good ideas and, you know, they would sell well, but I would, I would actually, to, give, to make sure I put them out, because it was so hard to make myself do that amount of work in one shot, it was forcing myself to eat a very big elephant. I'd give myself a deadline and I'd promote it and I would do a pre-sale. For people and say if you pre-order it I'll give you a little discount and so I'd have a hundred or a couple hundred people on the line waiting for me to get this done who'd already paid and I had to have it out by Friday the 16th and I made the announcement on Sunday you know the Sunday before and so now I got to film five two-hour videos meaning I got to do all of the thinking all the mental work before that prepare it come up with a lesson plan do all the teaching and the filming, do all the post-production work, get all the uploading done, which can take hours and hours and hours and hours, get everything set up so that people can actually purchase it on the website, film the YouTube teasers, get those on YouTube, etc., etc., etc. And at the end of that week, I would have that done, and I would not want to work again for a month. That's how hard it hurt to do that. And it was my own fault. Because I was asking too much of myself as my minimum commitment. You see what I mean? I was taking outrageous and putting it at minimum. I wasn't even putting it at target. I was putting it at minimum. And I didn't have three levels. I just had, here's what I expect of myself, and it was the outrageous. Well, no wonder I couldn't keep up with it. When I started this website that we have now, the members portal, I said to myself, what can you do every week consistently without fail? What can you count on yourself to do? What can you find the time to do even when you're at your worst, when you're the most overscheduled, when you're the most distracted, when you feel the worst about yourself, because let's face it, we all have days when we don't feel like we're worth anything, and it's really hard to do work on those days. Yeah, but when, when you're in those situations, what can you still find it in yourself to do? And I said, well, I think in the course of any given week, I can teach, one, I can teach two concepts, and I only have to film them one at a time. And that's how I came up with two new videos per week to the members portal. And I was said, you know, if I want to do more, I can always do more. But that's all I'm going to ask of myself for sure is that. Because that way, if I, I, I have all I'm kind of an infinite amount of stuff because I'm always learning new stuff that I can teach. But I need to get into some kind of a pattern where I never stop teaching. Well, guess what happened? It freed me. On some levels, it sounds like it would be harder because I committed myself to this thing every week. But the videos I teach now are between 10 minutes and a half hour long. They're not that exhausting for me to do mentally. 
I do them one at a time. Sometimes I do them back to back, but more often than not, I'll film one on Monday and one on Tuesday, or one on Monday and one on Wednesday. The post-production didn't take that long because they're fairly short videos, so they publish quick, they upload fairly quick. It's just a lot simpler. It's not overwhelming for me. And I have plenty of time to think about what I want to teach. And it turns out it's better for you. It's better for you because every lesson I teach is a bite-sized piece of information that you can actually digest in that one sitting, as opposed to this big gargantuan video that's too overwhelming for you, which is what a lot of times is happening before. Not that people didn't like the videos, but they were feeling overwhelmed. And here's the magical thing. So it's been over 20, it's been like 21 or 22 weeks now consecutively since I installed that policy of two new videos a week. Well, good heavens, I've added nearly 50 new videos in just a few months time. That's more filming than I did in two years prior to that combined. Over 50 new videos. And then when you throw in that for the last about uh, 16 weeks, I've been doing one new song tutorial clip. That's why I do one new song tutorial clip a week. Not a new song, because a full song tutorial is just as overwhelming to do as the long lesson videos I used to do. Because I used to do those too, the whole song, and that's overwhelming. If I'm in the mood for it, then I can do a whole song and then just do another clip the next week of another song. But I don't ask myself to do that if I don't feel up to it. And so when you throw in those, there's almost... There's over 60 new videos that have been thrown in. And then this video blog has been something that I can add in too because this is just getting together and chatting with you about the things that are on my mind, about anything that I can think of that could be useful or fun. And all I ask myself of this is to do this three times a week. I've been doing it more than three times a week because it's been such a blast. But I don't ask myself for more than that because I never am going to have a problem visiting with you or having fun with you three times a week. Plus, out of that three times a week, there's structures that I have for sure. I do my weekly piano lesson updates where I do a, a post that just tells you what the new videos for the week are. One of them is now going to be the demonstration series where I actually play you a song and break down you know, what rhythm pattern I'm using or what rhythm pattern I'm modifying for it and using licks and things that I teach and telling you kinds of chords I'm using so that you can see how we're actually using the chords, the rhythm patterns, the improv and lick techniques and the performance specialties to actually make music. So there's two and then at least once a week I try to do something just for fun, where I play something, do an impression, or where we get together and I talk about something that inspires me or motivates me. And so it's not that difficult. There's a structure I can fall into, and if I feel like doing more, I do. If I don't feel like doing more, then I don't. But I never, ever completely fall off the wagon anymore because I have a sustainable system called Minimum target outrageous that I use that keeps me moving forward. See Warren Buffett, if you're not familiar with him, I'm, I'm familiar with Warren Buffett like a lot of people would be, but I'm from Nebraska and that's where Warren's, where Warren lives and where he uh, bases his company is in Omaha, Nebraska. So he's a big deal in my old stomping ground. And Warren Buffett became one of the richest men on, on earth and he said, you know what the there's basically a couple of rules that he follows in order to, to make money. He says, rule number one, don't lose money. And rule number two, refer back to rule number one. So there's something really profound in that that correlates with what we're talking about. Don't lose money. In other words, you're not going to make money every day. Some days are going to suck. It's just, you know... But don't lose everything you've worked for because things aren't going your way temporarily. Nothing ever lasts forever. You know what I mean? No amount of distraction or anything or bad feelings or whatever stays at that terrible distracting level forever. But they might be there for a while. So if you drop down to minimum 
during those times and just stay on the wagon some, you actually keep, you maintain what you have done in the past. You may not be gaining a lot of new skills, but you're maintaining what you had. And when things clear up and you can start putting more effort into it again, you don't have to relearn what you've already lost because you were distracted. You keep going. And so success and growth in anything, including playing the piano, doesn't look like this. It looks like this. Up a little ways, plateau. Up a little ways, plateau. Up a little ways, plateau. Okay? It can also look like this. Up, down, but not quite down as far. Up, down, but not as far down as you've been. Up, down. This is a more painful way to do it. I have had growth and success in my life on both models, where you up, plateau, up, plateau, up, plateau. And I've had it where it's up, crash, up, crash, up, and each time I go a little bit higher, I crash, but not quite as far below. I'm telling you, it is so much less painful to do it with plateaus because you might feel stale because you're not learning anything new. But you don't feel disappointed because you can't do what you know you're capable of because you've lost it. Because you just have not been on the horse. And that's what I'm telling you about your practicing. You're going to have, you are going to have distractions come up. You're going to make plans. You're going to try your best. But you're going to have things come and distract you and you're not going to be able to stay with it at the same level that you want to. And it is going to disappoint you. But create a minimum standard. And I mean a minimum standard. Not something that's difficult to maintain. Something that's easy to maintain. Even in the worst of circumstances. 15, 20 minutes. Run through a couple rhythm patterns. Whichever ones are your favorites. Whichever ones you've been working on. Run through a couple licks doesn't matter. Stay engaged. If you're using it, if your brain has gone to the trouble to build those conduits, those highways that I talk about to send the neural messages through down into your muscles and fire them, if you use them regularly, even if it's just for a short time, it will maintain it for you. The clutter in your life will clear up eventually and you'll be able to do your two hours of practice and it'll feel good. And you'll start gaining new stuff again. But at the very least, maintain what you've got. Use a minimum. Use a target. Use an outrageous. That will help you deal with the incoming fire of life. Okay? Secondly, like I said, every once in a while something comes up. <clears throat> beg your pardon, something comes up that is so distracting that you can't even keep your minimum. Not very often, which is why I like to do minimums on a weekly basis rather than a daily. Because on any given day, I might be distracted from my minimum. But if I have a minimum I want to accomplish in the course of a week, it's really hard for me it's really hard for me to not be able to find time to film those two things in my one song tutorial and three blogs in the course of a week. It really is. There's not very much justification for that. Even if I'm on the road, it's pretty hard to do that. This thing that I'm dealing with here where I can't walk and I can't put any pressure on that foot, it may or may not preclude me from getting my song tutorial clip done. You know, and I probably should have gone ahead and done it on Monday. The problem was, by the time I got done with the two clips I'd had, I was a little bit mentally tired and my foot was starting to throb. And I thought, you know, I'll go rest this and try to get back to it. But more than likely, by Saturday, I should be able to get through it. If I can't, then here's how I deal with it. If I had a minimum that I set up and I could not honor it for some reason then I try to double the minimum the next period. So next week, I'll double the minimum that I wasn't able to do if I can't do it this week. Does that make sense? Still not overwhelming, 
I'm still getting my blogs in this week. I still got my lesson clips done, and hopefully I'll still get that tutorial clip done. But if I can't, then next week I'll do two song tutorial clips along with the minimums for everything else, and then anything more that I want to do. That way I'm still on the horse. I'm still making that real. And you're making that connection in your mind and in your heart. that This is important enough to you. And you stay connected. That's the thing. What happens is, is that you can't, when you basically give up because you can't have it exactly the way you want and perfect, which is what so many artists like we do, you become less connected to it. And the less connected to it you feel the less you're ever going to feel like coming back and doing it. You know? It's that sense of connection that actually makes it worth doing anything creative and artistic. That's really what we're after. It's not actually the achievement of what we can play. It's the connection we feel, you know, to whatever you want to call it, to your source energy, to your God, to the world around you, to other people to the energy of the music itself, whatever it is you feel connected to, that's really what you're doing this for. But you can't feel that connection unless you stay engaged. And the way you stay engaged is to create minimum standards for yourself to stick with that you know you can stick with in your worst case scenarios. And then do it. And don't let go. Just do it. You'll bust through your plateaus. You will not lose what you've already learned. And you'll be in a constant state of growth and deepening of your appreciation for what you do. And then when stuff comes out of the blue, like the gout or whatever your version of the gout is, that knocks you on your ass and you're not able to do what you promised yourself you would do, you can still stay engaged to some extent or another. And if you do have, God forbid, you have something really, really bad come up that does actually knock you off the horse and you can't, and you just can't even keep your minimums for that period of time. I mean, if you have double bypass surgery and you're laid up and you can't even get out of the hospital bed for a couple weeks and then you come home and you're, you just can't sit at the piano and practice, that's okay. Because you know what that minimum does for you? even though you can't do it, as soon as you're ready to come back and you don't have the stamina and the, the momentum and all of that, it's something simple to come back to that's not overwhelming and you can build yourself back into your practice and it will happen quicker than you think. You know? I'm very, very proud of how much work these minimums have allowed me to do, but it's the concept that allowed it. As soon as I stopped expecting the outrageous from myself all the time and started thinking small but consistent, I've had an explosion of productivity, and it ain't going away. And it feels so much better, and that's why I feel so connected to what I do because I'm always engaged. And so thank you for that opportunity. And I hope that this will help you understand because I just know how many, I've gotten so many wonderful messages and comments from you guys about, you know, the work you're gonna do and, and how much you're gonna practice. And I think that is wonderful. But I also know because I am one of you, that's what's so great about this. I am speaking to people who are just like me. I know that things are going to come up and interfere with that plan you've made and I know how disappointing that can be and what I'm asking you to do is create a minimum standard that you can keep as well. Think small. Not huge, but small. And take those small actions and let that be good enough in any given week. Let it be good enough unless you honestly feel like doing more. Don't Force yourself to do more than you want to do at any given time. And when you're in your worst places, keep up that minimum, that non-overwhelming minimum. Slow and steady wins the race. There's a reason why the tortoise beat the hare. Because the hare sprints and relaxes. And sprints and relaxes. And the tortoise just goes at a pace he can keep up with, but he doesn't stop. 
you do that, you will continue to get better and better and better, continue to feel an ever more deepening connection to the music, to your source energy, to your God, to the world around you, to other people, whatever it is that you're trying to get out of this experience. It will be ever deeper and ever more exciting, but you have to stay engaged. And the way you stay engaged is to not overwhelm yourself. <laughs> and artists are really good at overwhelming themselves. So. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. This has been a very long talk on my part, but I hope that it has been useful for you. It is something that I believe very, very deeply and has made a huge difference in my life. So I really appreciate it. And thanks for giving me a platform to share this stuff. You guys have no idea how much you mean to me. So keep up the great work. I will be seeing you in the members portal with new videos this week for sure. And I certainly hope that I will be healed up enough to film uh, my song tutorial segment by Saturday. If I'm not, then I'll send, I'll mention it in the newsletter uh, that I couldn't get it done. And as soon as I am able to, I will put one up on YouTube and, and uh, put it in the uh, archive here. So don't worry. If, if I can't, I will double up next week. It will get done, and this is my only piano playing of the day. Remember, if you're not having fun when you're doing this, you're doing it wrong.